Now, 82 Nigerian schoolgirls kidnapped by the extremist group Boko Haram have met their country's president after being freed in a prisoner swap. They were among more than 270 girls abducted from their school in the town of Chibok three years ago. At least 100 more are still in captivity. Well, we can speak now to Yvonne Idahosa, an organiser for Bring Back Our Girls and founder of the Pathfinders Justice Initiative works with uh, victims of sex trafficking and rape in the developing world. I know you're in Benin, don't you, in, in, in southern Nigeria. Thanks so much, Yvonne, for joining us. Have you heard anything at all about how these girls are, the ones who have been released? Unfortunately, we have not yet. Um, we anticipate that they, um, after meeting the president, that they are probably currently receiving psychosocial support, um, but we have not heard directly as to how they're doing. And, and any idea how this deal actually happened? I mean, reports of you know, prisoners being released in exchange. Yeah, I mean, so far the government has been pretty uh, closed-lipped about uh, the specifics of, of what happened. I mean, we pretty much only know what's been reported um, by the government and in the newspapers, um, which is that th these were um, th that the release of the girls followed negotiations um, and a prisoner swap. Uh, can I just ask you your thoughts on the fact that the girls have actually been freed? I mean, what is the speculation as to, as to what has happened to them in, in that time? And also, are the families actually being told exactly who has been set free? Reports that they're just having to find out in newspapers and on Twitter. Well, I mean, from what I understand, um, a list was actually released uh, last night, and um, that information was then provided to the head of the Chibok community here, who's contacted uh, the families whose daughters were actually on that particular list. And so, from what we understand, these are girls who have gone through, obviously, some of the worst possible atrocities um, that anyone should ever have to suffer. And um, so, the fact that they are um, going to be reunited with their families is something that has caused um, extreme jubilation um, with the Bring Back Our Girls movements, but even more so for the families whose daughters are going to be coming back home. And, and from your experience, how on earth do you begin to help someone who's been through the ordeal that they must have been through? You know, I think, you know, in, in my experience, what we do is essentially just take our cue um, from these girls. I mean, what, you know, what generally uh, they seem to need is just emotional support. That's usually the first thing, just knowing that um, they are welcome uh, back home, that they are loved and that they were missed. Um, I know that, you know, we've uh, spoken to some other families, particularly one mother whose daughter was on the list, um, and she just can't wait to put her arms around her and, you know, carry her on her back, um, she said. And so I think, you know, just knowing that they have the, the support of their families and, um, and the support of the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people so that they can be reintegrated back into their communities is going to go a really, really long way. And, and ultimately, if they've had children, you know, will those children be brought back with them? Will they be accepted? Will they be able to marry in their own communities, do you think? You know, there's certainly a concern about that. I think uh, most people who are in these communities are concerned about the fear of radicalization and whether these girls are, are genuinely loyal um, to the Nigerian people or loyal to, uh, to Boko Haram. So there is some concern about that. But I think, you know, this is where the Nigerian government really has to step in um, and be intentional about the efforts that are made to ensure that these girls are, are reintegrated back into their society and, um, and really enforce the fact that they're, they're not... They're not victims. I'm sorry that they also um, are victims like so many others of Boko Haram and that this wasn't something that they chose willingly um, to get um, get involved in. And so I think if there is okay. if, the, if there's that intentionality behind it, it will go a really long way. Yvonne Idahosa, thank you so much.